Hi everyone, uh, it's Kevin here, Arizona Squatch, and uh, unfortunately I'm shooting this video at home. I would, was really planning on being up uh, up on the mountains for this weekend because uh, this is a very special weekend, especially uh, you know, with the whole squatching thing, and that's uh, for me, and that's the whole purpose of uh, this video. You know, so sorry I'm not up at North, but I uh, uh, had some family celebrations going on this weekend. And that was just a little more important. Uh, so anyway, today is what is it, June 10th of 2018, and it is the one-year anniversary of uh, you know, this whole. Uh, Squatching thing kicking off for me. Um, not the not the first time I've ever dealt with a squatch. Uh, however, it was the first time that I knew it was Bigfoot. Uh, had an interaction back when I was about thirteen years old with the Boy Scouts. Um, not not real far from where Squatch Camp is at, um, which. It was pretty interesting with with everything else, but uh, uh, I'm not going to go into the in, into the, the Boy Scout encounter. Uh, we're just going to talk about the one year anniversary with uh, uh, with with me moving into uh, this world that I have jumped both feet in and. Uh, that has completely changed not just my world but my life uh, for the better. Um, can't explain it, um, but just take my word for it. I am a much better person today than I was a year ago today. <laughs> um, so what had happened is. Uh, we had gone up to this campsite up on the Mogollon Rim here in central Arizona. And uh, we, we had a large group up there. My entire family, minus one child, um, wasn't there. Uh, she was uh, on a separate vacation um, out of state uh, with some friends. So um, she wasn't there. It, uh what we had go happen, you know, let me back up before even get into that. Um, my son and I, and, and, and who, my son's 32 years old, so he's, he's fully grown, has family of his own. But uh, we've always got a kick out of when we go out camping, you know, you know, since the Finding Bigfoot show came on, you know, which, which we thought was cool. And it was like, wow, this is awesome. I can, you know, let's, when we go out camping, we need to go knock on trees. And, you know, I didn't know what the hell we were doing. But so, we're out on this camping trip, and I told my son, I said, hey, let's go for a walk. And so we went out for a walk, and uh, we found this really, really old logging road. Um, I mean, that probably from... 50, 60 years ago, it was well grown over, but so we started walking down that and found a drainage, and, and well, let's go down the drainage a little bit, and uh, found a game trail, and so we started following the game trail, and we were on the game trail probably, you know, somewhere between 50 to 100 feet when uh, we found the first footprint, I was like, we got a footprint, and then we found the next footprint, you know, so it was a left foot and a right foot, and, uh, you know, I didn't have anything to measure them with other than up against my boot, I wear a size 11, um, you know, wearing redhead snake boots, so, you know, it, it, it's, I don't have a huge foot, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's good to measure up against, and th this was several inches larger than, than my boot. And uh, so we were real excited about this. And so we started to walk down the game trail just a little bit farther. And I was like, well, let's go down in the drainage. 
because there was a big dirt area down there. And I was like, well, if we found prints here, we should really find them down there. And as we're walking down the hill, I thought I'd heard a wood knock. And I looked at my son, and he didn't show any signs of, you know, peaked interest or, or that he heard anything. And, and so I just kind of blew it off. And, you know, I, I was just hearing stuff. And so we got down to the bottom and, and, you know, examining this area for footprints when we got a wood knock. And I looked at him and, at my son and I said, you heard that, right? And he goes, yeah, I heard that. And so I looked around and I found a stick and, and so I did a knock back and immediately got a response with another knock. We're like, oh, 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 oh there's one over there. And, uh, you know, so my son goes, I want to do a wood knock. So he did one. And after he did his, immediately got a double knock back. It was knock, knock. And so we were just super excited about that. And, and I was like, well, I'm going to do a whistle. So I, <whistles> and the other side of the drainage from where the knocks were coming from, got a whistle back. I was like, There's two of them out here. And uh, so we made the decision to go back up to the game trail because where we were getting the wood knocks from was maybe another 50 yards uh, down the game trail that we were on. And uh, so we got up there and we slowly were walking around up there and, you know, we we're trying to get some more wood knocks and what, nothing answering back and you know, so we'd walk a little bit and stop, and walk a little bit and stop, you know, just kind of imitating what we learned from finding Bigfoot. And uh, we got about to where I thought the wood knocks were coming from, and I got this deep, immense uh, feeling, don't go any farther you know you've gone far enough don't come any closer and you know and I took I looked at my son and you know w without kind of sounding like uh, like I lost my mind I just said we need to go back to camp we don't need to go any farther and he was just standing there and I said are you getting the feeling that that we need to leave he goes oh yeah oh yeah and I said okay let's leave and as so we're walking back towards our camp and I don't know the reason why but I started talking to him and you know sorry for interrupting sorry for being you know being here without your permission um, I'm just curious you know stuff like that as we're walking out and I had decided I was going to set a trap and so I went back, I went back to the camp. Oh, before we would left, as we we're getting that feeling, um, then we were turning around, getting ready to walk back out. Uh, we heard distinct bipedal steps walking away from us on the other side of this young grove of trees. And, uh, you know, and so that's when I started talking and we we're walking out and I got back to camp. I immediately grabbed my trail camera and a granola bar and I went back out and I found this stump uh, that's where a tree had rotted and broke, pine tree probably eight inches in diameter and it, where it broke was probably, it, it comes up to here on me, so right about five foot and uh, so I figured that was a perfect place for me to spring my, you know, set my trap. And so I set up, set up the trail camera on this, or looking at this, uh, at this stump. And I took a granola bar and I opened it halfway and I wedged it into the top. And, and you know, I told my son, I said, anything, even if it's a squirrel, takes this granola bar, I'm going to have pictures of it. And so we had left and went back to camp. And 
later that night, all, all my grandkids, they were playing with, uh, with those glow sticks, the chem lights. And it, it was about nine o'clock at night. And I went, I got an idea. And so I took a chem light and my son and I walked back out because I was going to put a chem light right next to the granola bar to attract them. You know, they're dumb animals and they need this light up here to let them know that there's a granola bar or something. I, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And so we had uh, gone out there and when I got up to the stump and was placing the chem light, I like, um, half the granola bar is gone, Chris. And he's what? And I said, come here. Yeah. And, and sure shit, half, half the granola bar was gone. And I was like, Oh, whatever got it. I've got pictures of if it was Bigfoot, I've got pictures of Bigfoot. I've got the money shot. You know, we're going to make money. I am brand new. I have no idea what the frick is going on. But so as we're standing there, uh, we got uh, a stomp and, you know, probably about 15 feet away from us. And I was like, okay, we're leaving. We're leaving. You know, the granola bar is yours. And, and so we we turned around and was heading back to camp. And it's 200 yards, 300 yards back to the camp. And uh, we were paralleled all the way back to camp. And then my son decided later on that night with my son, both my son-in-laws and a couple of my older grandchildren who are teenagers, and they decided to go back out there. And when they were out there, they had uh, rocks thrown, they had grunts, and they had branch breaks. And they had uh, just all the intimidating uh, behavior that uh, that we know that they do. Um, you know, it, it's a test, you know. And so they came back to camp rather quickly. And so the next morning, uh, I went out and I retrieved the trail camera. And I pulled the card and I put it in my... Uh, my digital camera because I didn't have a laptop at the time and I have pictures of when I set the trail camera up I got pictures of me placing the granola bar I got pictures of me coming back with the chem light and I got pictures of my son and all them coming back out but whatever took half the granola bar the camera malfunctioned because like I said you know it could have been a chipmunk and I would have captured it you know, so, I, you know, I'm hearing on Finding Bigfoot on a couple of episodes where they've talked about trail cameras malfunctioning and stuff like that. I was like, well, that had to be what it is. And so I, you know, we had left camp, you know, that was the last day there. And uh, I, I was just completely um, taken by this experience, you know, I. You know, I, I, I've lived a world of experiences, um, and uh, th this one, this this one really took me. And after uh, debating with myself for for about two weeks, I finally, uh, you know, decided that I know what had happened was real enough. And it wasn't just me, it was my family members experiencing this as well. So I went on the BFRO website and I made a report. And a couple weeks later, uh, I meet up with a BFRO investigator. I'm going to leave the name out uh, per his request. Um, but him and I have become... Uh, become pretty close friends but uh, so anyhow he calls me up on the phone and, and does a phone interview with him and you know and, and I tell him everything that had happened and, and he goes well do you remember where it was at I said I'll take you right to it you know it's uh, you know uh, this is etched in my mind and uh, 
So we made arrangements to uh, excuse me for a minute, but we made arrangements to uh, uh, to meet uh, in Pace in Arizona, and from there we went up on the rim, Mogollon Rim, and, and proceeded into into the, my campsite. And I was chomping at the bits to take him out and show him where all this had happened and. You know, and, and we were planning on spending three nights up there, you know, and, and he said, just, hey, slow down, relax, you know, we got plenty of time for this. And, you know, and, and, and I'm grateful for, uh, you know, for for his advice and and uh, and, and his knowledge, you know, he, he sat me down and, you know, I was like, well, what do you know about Bigfoot? And I said, well, I know they're real. And... and uh, you know, I've had a, an experience in the Boy Scouts, and some other stuff happened on on backpack trips that I've made that uh, are unexplainable. But uh, you know, so it, he he started telling me everything he knew and about all these different camps in the Bigfoot community. And, you know, and, and there there's a lot of uh, uh, discontent between these different camps. And I like doesn't make sense to me you know it, 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 it's hard enough to believe you know to be part of society and believe that Bigfoot is real because everybody's gonna laugh at you and you know and the people that believe in Bigfoot you know is, is you know that there's that big of a rift and uh, and I, I understand it now but it still doesn't make any damn sense to me That was kind of a contradictory, but you know what I mean. Um, but so we we sat there, and you know, and he told me about the the great apers and and the another people group, and then the woo, you know the woo group, and, and I was like, what do you mean a woo? And so he starts telling me the stuff that the Woo community believes in it. I'm like, what a bunch of crackpots, you know. And uh, he says, well, just keep an open mind, you know, because nobody knows for sure. And so, if if you're gonna be involved in this, allow yourself to grow. Keep an open mind. And. I was like, well, you know, that that sounds like sound advice, and and so uh, so I did, and you know, and, and that very first night, wow, you know, uh, we had a nighttime sighting, thirty six yards away from us, about eight, eight uh, well, we, uh, the BFRO investigator that was with me, um, he was. He was seeing movement, and, and I couldn't see exactly where he's talking about because of where I was sitting and, and trees blocking. But the opposite direction of where he was thinking he was seeing movement, I keep getting this distinct, I'm watching you. You know, it was very stern. It wasn't threatening, but it was very stern. I'm watching you. And, and, and I was a little unnerved by it. And, and, uh, you know, so I'm concentrating over off to my right, my nine o'clock position. And because, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, I, I'm on high alert, you know, I've got something telling me I'm watching me and, uh, you know, it, you know, the, the warrior comes out and, uh, But uh, this uh, this sighting that he had, uh, he was about eight feet tall. Had stepped out from behind a tree and was standing with its arms down to his sides, and uh, could clearly see him. And he'd rock back and forth just a little bit, and then he stepped back behind the tree. Then he'd come back out and he'd turn sideways, kind of gave a side profile, and then step back behind the tree. And, 
while this was going on, and I'm getting this intense feeling of I'm watching you, uh, from where I'm getting that feeling from, I, I tell him, I said, I see big green eyes, I think. And he wanted to know if I knew how high off the ground it was. And I said, well, um, I, roughly, I, I know where it's at. We'll, we'll check it in the morning. And, uh, and, and then we got, you know, we were getting zapped and, that, you know, and that was, that was kind of funny, you know, cause, you know, and this happened before he had the sighting, uh, I was getting up, getting a bottle of water out of the truck and he goes, I think I'm getting zapped and I'm like, what the hell is that? And so he says, come sit down and I'll tell you about the zap. And so I sat down and, and I said, well, what did it feel like? And he was telling me, I said, well, I was feeling that same thing. I just, I, you know, I, I didn't know what it was. I just thought because of my nerve damage that I have from uh, chemical exposure in Desert Storm with uh, serine nerve gas, um, you know, I just thought it was my nerve endings firing off. And, uh, you know, which, which does periodically happen. And... Um, So I, I came and sat down, and they started telling me about the whole infrasound thing, and and, uh, and and then the sighting happened, and the eye glow happened, and you know, just I I I was I was blown away. And it's completely changed my life. And that that year, I spent 32 days at that site, which um, uh, I call Squatch Camp. And every night I'm there, and sometimes during the day, I have activity, um, interactions, gift exchanging, so forth and so on. Um, I'm close to the 32 day mark for this year already. Um, I think by the time June is over with, I will have uh, well surpassed 32 days. And, uh, you know, it's, I have learned, learned so much. And yet I know nothing, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's keeping the open mind, you know, open to all possibilities. And I kept having things happen that could, you know, you, you couldn't explain it in the natural world. You just can't. And, you know, so when when you're left with this kind of uh, evidence and these kind of experiences, and you're allowing yourself to keep an open mind, you know, you start understanding a different reality. And, you know... Uh, When, when you see them vanish right in front of your eyes, you know, I, I've had two daytime sightings, and both times they just vanished. Um, you know, how does that happen? You know, how, how do they come into my camp every single night and sometimes play with my audio recorder and move stuff around on the table that the audio recorder set on and yet leave no, no tracks whatsoever. You know, how? How is that possible? Trying to explain things in the natural state. You can't. Um, uh, uh, orbs, you know, the, the shimmering light. Um, 
and and it's not just me experiencing this up there you know it's uh this bfro investigator you know it's uh it's been really eye-opening to him and everybody i've taken up there is uh is going to tell you the same thing i'm telling you you know that that this is outside of the natural world as we know it and you know the bottom line is we only know what we know we don't know what we don't know and you know that's that that's a very powerful statement we know very little about anything you know, it's, I mean, hell, we don't even know where we are. I mean, yeah, here we are on planet Earth and the solar system in the Milky Way, but where is all that? You know, and, and where is that at? You know, and, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, with, with all the space, are we, uh, you know, are, are we in Albuquerque, New Mexico? You know, you know, we know very little. Um... So how could you not keep your keep an open mind, you know, and that, you know, these experiences that I'm having and people that I've take up taken up there are having, um, people all over the planet are having these, you know, outside the natural world experiences, you know, call it supernatural, whatever you want to call it, interdimensional. <coughs> which all tie in together but uh, you know the moment you limit what it could be or what could happen or what their capabilities are um, hang it up quit because you're not going to learn anything there's so much to learn uh, you know I have learned a lot and I know nothing you know over and over again I've stated this and I'm gonna state it again the definition of insanity doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result you know going out walk through the forest and banging on trees and getting you know you get a knockback you know that, that that's cool and you're running around with high-tech equipment which they know what it is they can see it they can sense it they can hear it they can smell it they can taste it however you want to look at it they know what it is. You're not fooling them. They're not dumb animals running around the forest. They're just not. And until you understand that, you're going to be limited to, you know, an occasional, oh, I, you know, I got a glimpse of one. Uh, you know, I got two seconds of one on a, on a therm, you know, and you know, I've got blurry images on my trail camera. You know, stop it, guys. They know they know what it is. Stop acting like the paparazzi. Um, you know, I know a lot of you out there want to prove their existence. Well, it, it's already been proven. You're not proving anything. Uh, maybe trying to prove something to yourself. You know, convince yourself that, you know, what you think you believe, you actually believe, or, or, or something. I, you know, I don't know. It doesn't make sense make a whole lot of sense to uh, you know keep doing what you're doing and being satisfied with the results that you're getting um, you know it, I look at it as a lack of results and uh, you know I, I, I did that at first I abandoned it um, Habituation, same thing, you know, I, I wear red shirts, 
the red truck parked in the same spot, my tent's always in the same spot, if I'm using just my cot, my cot's in the same spot, my routine is the same every single day. I get up in the morning, I do the same exact thing, same time of day I go for my walk, same, you know, <clears throat> be predictable, but uh, the, there, there's so much to learn from them, and so now here I am, you know, I find myself in the woods because of, you know, the, the experiences that I've had dictated, and I don't have any other choice, you know, so, um, you know, I might shoot a couple more videos, uh, you know, in regards to uh, the happenings of, uh, uh, of my Boy Scout experience um, when I was a teenager, but uh, this is going to be it for now. Um, one year, wow, what a ride it's been, and it's just barely begun.